and, and money was not an issue. And this is just to show that uh, there are some places, or rather, the political terrain and the political climate is changing. People are really looking for who is going to work for us, who is going to do what for us. We are not interested in who was there or who was. So what is spoiling the whole thing, in my view, is that automatic ticket. Now, where, you call, where there is an automatic ticket, obviously, it means it is not competence that is going to put you there. It is not your popularity or it is not what kind of work you would do. And I think that's where uh, uh, the problem is. And I think women also, we need to change the narrative. I can always come out and say I am and I can be, and I think that's the narrative we sh should start uh, uh, looking at. Not thinking of why they are not going to allow me to do it. I think I can do it and I will do it and I will force myself in there and I will make sure that I am there as well. Now, if we are going to, once we are able to, to have that narrative, and we know we have a problem with men, so we look for competent, qualified, passionate, and sympathetic women that are going to take this thing and take it forward. Once we are able to do that, believe me, I think the men will also have to listen to us. The only problem we have is, of course, at the top, like she says, the gatekeepers. And I think that's where we need to work more. But believe me, the populace down there, at the grassroots, they know exactly what they want now, and they're going for it. You will find that there are people going to, for different parties. You know, uh, they, they, they will elect uh, uh, PDP, and then they will elect APC in another place, and they will elect PRP in another That's what is happening now. Okay. Now, the, the, this conversation has brought up the issue of other parties outside the two leading parties, the APC and the PDP. And, and, and Dora, I'm happy you're here because you decided not to work with any of the sort of mainstream parties, the PDP or the APC. You decided to go to um, Alliance, Action Alliance, Action Alliance yep. in Imo State, yes. contested, won the, the right yes. you know, to represent your party. What guided that decision, given that the few women that I've spoken to have always said to me, well, you know, we want to win the elections ultimately. Mm -hmm. And so the, that's the reason why we keep going to the two leading parties. Why did you buck the trend? Okay, just uh, before I answer the question, she said something about, you know, um, the problems we have with the men. I think it's what the problems we have with what the men are doing. Because whether we like it or not, we still have to go into negotiations and lobbying and conversations at the end of the day. Back to your question. I think, you know, um, people make parties and not the other way around. The structures are built by people. And for the fact that, you know, we have 91 political parties in Nigeria and just have two major ones, the APC and the PDP, I think there was a problem, first of all, that these are the only two parties, that, you know, that have dominance at both at the national and at the state level. And I looked at it. And I went back home and I had conversations with women and youths alike. And the post I was seemingly getting was the fact that they are no longer worried about political parties, you know, so to speak. They are more worried about candidates, more worried about the people that are coming and emerging from the political parties. And if you look at the smaller or the minority parties, what you would also find is the fact that there is an issue of money, of course, funding the party and establishing the party first, you know, as a party. But I believe that, you know, when you want to join a political party, you should also be thinking of your duty to the political party. What are you going to bring on board? And that's where I believed uh, in the process of joining Action Alliance. And I went back to the roots and I said, you know what? I, I, I joined the political party so that I could be of service. But you could also join political parties so that you could also help build the party structure. And so for, for Action Alliance, I was able to galvanize more women mm. to join political parties than the men. So we have more women at the grassroots who are now seemingly looking at a young woman who would come emerge and do something different. Yeah. Yeah. We have to take another quick break. Please don't go away. Welcome back. We are talking women and politics. Now, before the break, we sort of discussed what we consider systemic issues around female inclusion um, um, in, in elective office, but also in sort of the highest uh, uh, positions in governance. Um, when you kind of talk to a few people who are very critical of the way we're structured in this country, they tell you that actually they're not surprised with the issues that we face structurally. Because political parties are just tools, they believe, designed for the capture of state power. 
And under those sort of circumstances, you cannot expect those kind of instruments to have any sort of democratic structure underneath them, because then they won't do what they're designed to do, which is essentially to capture state power. What do you feel about that postulation? And I want the audience to jump in on this. Yes, the, the lady at the back in purple, yes. why we still have this issue of exclusion of women um, begins from the political party because um, at the end at the end of it all only who the parties feel that would vote for and that is why from the point of primaries the exclusion becomes a major issue but the thing is the way the parties are structured because if parties are structured as, as democratic institutions that are designed to ensure democratic development then you'd also see in their practices democratic principles but we don't have that we just have a few persons who control power within parties now let's make a clear example with the primaries even decisions on party nomination fees, for instance, should be a party membership decision, for instance. Even decisions on the modes of primaries should be a decision decided by party members. But what we have is a decision that comes from the top to the bottom and not bottom top. So even members within the parties do not have the power to exercise authority within the parties. And that is why when we have women who are capable and competent and even paid to contest the primaries emerge as even winners, you would see them being substituted and you don't even have party members even protesting against it because this, are the, this is the okay, point let, let party me, members let can let actually speak Let me stop you up. here. And, and, and it is, this is not me, you know, just um, being anti-APC and PDP. It's just that they're the leading parties and so they're kind of um, the ones that I have access to information about. In their manifestos, both parties actually um, make promises about inclusion. In practice, it doesn't happen. There are leading women here today from both parties. Why are you not holding your parties accountable to the promises that they make in their manifesto about female inclusion? And this question is to the distinguished senators. short at it. Um, I said earlier that it was only when we made a very deliberate effort to include women that we got the huge numbers that uh, participated in government. And that was the period the PDP made a commitment to that and they were in power and they ensured that we got almost 35% of participation uh, in appointments, and um, we didn't quite get that in elective positions. You must also keep in mind the fact that even when you win primaries, primaries is within the party, it becomes an issue to win the main elections because you're going to face everyone out there. It's, not, it's no longer about no, your No, but what party. we're finding is women are not even making it to the ballot papers. Well, um, m most of the major, major parties have tried over the years to include women. But like I said, we abandoned the process whereby we galvanized ourselves into um, opinion leaders and we put pressure on our parties. We used to do that. But at a point, everyone felt, well, we are there and we took a back seat and allowed the system to work. And so the parties relaxed. Whether you like it or not, except we come together and we insist that this is what we want. And we say, we want to hold you to what is in the constitution. We cannot, uh, or in the manifesto, you can't do much. Okay, let me, just, let me stop you there. I have to take another quick break. Please don't go away.